Hey everyone, this is Arish. Welcome to my channel. Today in this video, I will be discussing about some useful tips and tricks about Linux Terminal. Let's get started. Alright, I am on my laptop screen. Let me open my terminal. So basically here I am using my Red Hat Linux. Okay. In my terminal, I have opened these two tabs. So what we will be doing is, I will be discussing some 8 to 9 you know, handy tricks you can call it as which will boost your productivity whenever you are working in a terminal. So the first one is minimizing keystroke for Linux terminal. So whenever you know, whether it is a coder or system admin or programmer or web developer, somehow the other way they interact with the terminal. So whenever they are working with the terminal, you have to write plenty of commands, right? So you know, it decreases your productivity. So here I will show some handy way wherein you, you can increase your productivity whenever you are working in a terminal. Okay? So think of a situation where you, wherein you have you know, very lengthy command like you are listing the file and you are giving some option, something like this, you know, lengthy command. What you can do is like, you can add it to an alias. Okay? Just add a keyword called alias and give some name called, you know, let it be Harish itself. I will close this in code. So this is the syntax. You know this ls hyphen al com command would be reduced to Harish. I am giving an alias name for this. So let us see. Okay. I have misspelled the spelling. So it is not al yes, alias. Okay. Now whenever I type Harish. So it will do the job of ls hyphen al command. Okay, so whenever you are working with the terminal and you want to do some complex operation in terms of commands, you can just write that command in some alias and give it a name, which you can eventually use in you know future to do that operations. Okay, now this alias command is temporary only for this session. If you want to make this Harish command as permanent, what you have to do, you have to go to the bash the when you hit ls hyphen al it will print all the files there is something known as dot bash rc so what you have to do you have to add that command alias command in this such that it would be permanent whenever you restart your system even though you restart your system that command would be active example i will just open this command using a vim vim dot bash rc so in this file what you have to do, you have to add that whatever command you want to give, you have to add it below this. I will just show you. And I to go to insert mode, then I will do alias prasad equal to hyphen ls space hyphen al. That means this ls hyphen al command now I can use with the name prasad. So and this would be permanent this changes would be permanent whenever I restart my system still the prasad command would still exist because I have added that alias command as permanent in bash dot, dot bash rc file now let me hit a command prasad uh, let me just check what happened prasad prasad command is not found let me see what went wrong so okay so PRSAD seems to be right. Let me save this and PRASAD Prasad. Okay. Now that we have seen about alias command, let's move forward. So the second command is multiple commands when first one fails. What does that mean when you are running, now currently I was running one command at a time, example date is one command, right? Uh, but I want to run multiple command, okay? But what happens is like, you know, when I am running multiple command, but if one command fails, all other commands will terminate, they will not work because one command has stopped, it has, you know, interrupted the other command. So what is the way, you know, wherein you can run multiple commands if one command fails also? So example, what I will be doing, I will run ls command followed by I will put double pipeline, double you know line and tell the next command. What is the next command which I want to execute? I want to do you know clearing the screen followed by I want to execute a date command followed by 
uh, something called cal command but this time i would give something other name uh, actual name of a cal command is cal but i will give something called you know her her command does not exist okay let's see what it gives after this i will again you know execute pwd command now let me run here what am i doing is i am running multiple commands in a single line and this hcr command does not exist that means it should stop me here but what this will do it will not stop it will run until pwd command even though hcr command fails let us see okay we can observe here you know ls command is running this is the output of ls command uh then i have a date command date command is also been run okay if not in this way what i will be doing i will replace this pipeline with the semicolon okay let's see i don't know what went wrong okay okay you can see here what happened is like the first command the first command was listing it listed everything then second it cleared the screen that is why you are not able to see whatever the items were listed you are not able to see because the screen got clear after that once the clear command has been run it run the date command once the date command has been run it 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 run the you know hcr command where in hcr command it tells command does not found because hcr is not a valid command right followed by that it did not stop what it did uh, even though it got some error it went to pwd command this is how what you can do you can run you know multiple commands when one, first one fails okay let me show one more quick demo okay instead of this what i will do the first one i write something hey Here is not a valid command we know. After that, what I do? Put a semicolon and give date command. So even though here is not a command, it will skip that and run a date command successfully. Let us see this. See bash. Here, you know, command does not found. Then what it did? It did not stop. It went to the other thing. What was the other command? Date command. Right. Now we we'll move forward. next is the search command you know everywhere okay whether it is a linux or everywhere in the world of programming or a normal in a real life we do lot of searching right so you know in windows you can do easily search you can do you know control f to find something and there is something cortana for you know easy to access something but in terminal in you know linux terminal how do you search something right for that what i will be doing you know there is something handy command known as man manual database okay what i do i create a manual database see manual database space hyphen c option what hyphen c does it is a create a manual database i have already created it okay see manual database hyphen c what i am doing i am creating a manual database i have already created the manual database if this command gives some error what you can do you know if this command is giving something error what you can do you can do uh, you know run this command as a super user just what what you can do you can append before running this command just give sudo what it does is it gives a super you know extra power to run this command you are uh, when you do sudo you are not a normal user you are a root user you are running this command as a root user then it will not throw any error so i have already you know run this command So what I am doing, I am creating a manual database to search something. Once I have created any manual database, I can use a command called a propox. A propox. It is a command. You know, see, example. I don't know what are the commands available. There are you know thousands of commands in Linux. So what I can do, I just know there is something command to list something, but I don't know the command name. For that, what I can do, I can just type a propox as a command. I am telling list something. so what it will give it will it will give all the list of commands that can do some operations okay so i can find here easily where is the list command see you can see here there is ls command to list something okay just what you have to do you have to just remember the operation or what you want to do you just try to hit some you know some words or some letters related to that example if i want to do you know list the who is the you know host name if i want to know the host name just write something called you know approx and host something host okay 
it will list all the commands wherein you can search for the host name see you are pinning uh, host name say here you can see host name so what is the purpose of this command is like you need not by heart any command okay you have to just know there is some operation something known as listing this or changing the directory or printing something or knowing the time with that what you have to do you have to just write a command code known as a, a pro you know Apropox, and what you have to do, you have to just write what you want to do. Just write one letter L. It will list everything starting from the L command. Okay, this is the advantage of this command. Let's move forward. The next is unfreeze your Linux terminal for accidentally, you know, control S. Basically, in, you know, in any file which you are working with or in Windows, basically, if you do control S, it saves the file. Okay. It saves the file such that whatever you know data you are working on, you can access the same data later. But in Windows terminal, but you know, but in Linux terminal, if you if I hit something known as Control S, my screen is freezed. Whatever I am typing, it is not visible in the prompt. Okay, it is freezed. But to you know come back from this freeze, I will do Control Q. See. Whatever I was typing, you know, so far everything is being, you know, recorded in the backend, but it is not being shown in the terminal because the screen was freezed. Okay, so when you hit, you know, unknowingly if you hit Control S in your terminal, you can come back to the normal screen by hitting Control, you know, left Control Q, Control Q. Okay. Because this many a times when you are you know you have the habit of working in you know Windows system and some files by unknowingly you just do Control S then you know you don't know what is happening behind the scene okay at that time what you can do you can just hit Control Q and come back to the you know proper prompt so the next command is displaying an output has a table format okay displaying an output has a table format. What does that I mean? Example, let me clear my screen. Okay. So what I do, I will display cat. Okay, I will go to the etc folder. There is something known as password. Uh, password. Okay. Uh, okay. It is etc, not is etc. Okay. See, you can see. A uh, cat command is basically used to display something, you know, data from a file. What I'm doing, I'm telling cat go to the directory called etc, which consists a configuration file, and there is a file known as password. Okay, these are the content which is present in the password. See, this looks so clumsy, right? We cannot read this. So what I can do, I can arrange this in the table format such that it is, you know, very clear to read or understand. How can I do that? There is a command known as column. Okay. So what I do, I tell cat display the result, but whatever the result is there, I will be using pipe symbol. Okay, see I have given an example here. Whatever the symbol is there, whatever this data output is there, with the help of pipe, what pipe does? It sends the uh, output of one you know command is being transferred as an input to the other command. So what is the other command? Column. Okay, I am telling column hyphen t. What does mean hyphen column? Column is a command which is used to display the data in a table format. So hyphen t means table and add the separator. Okay. What is this? S means separator. It is a delimiter, right? By default, that delimiter is a white spaces. So what will happen? Everything, these things will be, you know, separate, you know, arranged in the table format with the help of white space. Let us see the output. See, you can see the difference. See this output looks so clumsy and it is very you know it is not possible it is you know it is difficult to read but when you see this thing it is structured in the table format with the help of white spaces if you don't want white spaces if you want some you know uh, lines or some sort of you know some punctuation marks to separate between you can just change this option instead of hyphen yes you know you can put some other options and you can get to know this. If you want to explore some more option, what you can do, you can go to the manual page of the column. Okay, you will see. Okay, you will, you will get different. You have a different different options. You can display the data in JSON format or table format. Okay, this is what we use separator. Okay, you can explore these things. So this column table is used to display the output in a table format. The next thing is emptying a file without deleting it. 
let us see this this is also you know if you want to you know de uh, uh, delete the data from the content what we basically do we delete the whole file right if you want that file but we want to update the content from that file what we can do easily example let me clear my screen instead of writing clear command i can do control l to clear screen this is one more tip okay so let me create a file you know cat let me create a file known as demo.txt and here i'll be adding hello harish you know whatsapp okay this is some data which i am adding okay let me see the data demo dot let me see the data what i have typed now cat demo dot txt so hello harish what's up so this data is present within this demo dot txt file now what i want to do i don't want to delete this demo dot txt file but still i want to erase the data present inside that what i can do just you know do this forward you know greater than or forward angle bracket then type the file name what it will do it will you know it will erase all the data which is present in the demo dot txt file okay this is basically this operator is called forward redirection operator okay so before the redirection i am not giving anything so it is just empty empty the file demo dot txt okay the command is working successfully let me see if there is some data cat demo dot txt there is no data okay so the another you know wonderful trick is sometimes you run command okay but you don't know whether it fails or if it gives a error definitely you know there is something wrong but it doesn't give the error and if it is not giving the appropriate output how will you know get how will you get to know whether the command is you know working fine or not okay what you can do echo you know give a dollar sign and give a question mark if you are getting zero right if you are getting zero that means your previous command you know it it was executed successfully okay if i am giving something right you know example instead of date i am giving you know dat so i know this command is wrong but this time i am getting a error message telling command not found okay but when i do echo dot question mark okay dollar question mark it is printing some numerical value other than zero okay every time it might change if it is printing other than zero that indicates whatever the command or a program or a process was not executed successfully there was some sort of error okay which your shell gave okay because this command we are executing in our shell basically i am here using a bash shell okay if i execute some command take command i have executed successfully then again if i run this command echo dollar question mark it shows zero what zero indicates it indicates that that you know that command date command was you know executed successfully if you would have been familiar with the programming languages in c c++ you give something known as return zero in the main function why do you give return zero that means whatever the code written in the main function got executed successfully so zero indicates here success Uh, you know success rate if it is uh, any other new number other than zero it is some sort of error okay now that we have seen this command let us see you know recording your command line session okay sometimes whatever the commands you are executing if you want to see what are the previous command what i executed you can run a command known as history okay so it will display all set of command whatever you have executed okay think of a scenario in case your history command is you know not storing some data or something but whatever the operations you are doing in the command line you want to record those session what you will do at that time so what i do there is a you know very handy command again known as script i'll write a script and i'll give a file name whatever the file name i will give you know demo2 dot demo2 okay so script is a command and demo2 is a file name which you have to enclose within a square bracket so when you hit this enter from now on see script started what it is doing it is uh, scripting it is you know recording all whatever i type here from now on you know whatever pwd ls or cat whatever command i type here it will record in this demo.2 file such that in future if something goes wrong you can retrieve those data it would be stored okay let me execute some more command here let me do you know host name and 
and process axiom. Don't worry about this command. So, so far I have did, you know, I have executed this command. Now what I'll do, I'll write here exit. I'm exiting from the script, whatever the script command, I'm exiting from that. See here, script done. So far whatever scripting I was writing, it is done and it is stored in the file known as demo.2. Let me clear the screen. Now what I do, I will list it. See, there is a file known as demo2. Let me, you know, display this file, what is present inside this. Okay. See, whatever the command, whatever I was typing so far, everything is been recorded. Basically, the screen is been recorded. You need not use any sort of software to record the terminal. Everything is been recorded, whatever I was typing so far. Okay, from, from here. From here, everything is been recorded. So, what is the advantage if you want to remember some commands for the future reference and you don't have any sort of you know screen recording software, you can make use of the script command. If you don't know the option, you can explore more options using this manual page. Manual script. Man, man is a command which will give the manual page for any command. Okay. See. Okay, script. Take make a type script of a terminal session. Whatever you, you executing in terminal, it you know it basically records your screen. Okay. Now that we have seen you know how to record a terminal session, let's move to let's move to other two commands. Okay. The next one is converting lower case to upper case or replacing spaces with tabs okay you know when you have a, a very lengthy script or a lengthy file you know where you want to search something and replace it okay at that time what we can make use of or you have a lower case uh, letters and you want to convert upper case you cannot manually go and do everything each and every letter right so we have a very you know very famous and powerful command known as translate you know, you do uh, whether if you if you are good at English and you go to Google Translate and tell, hey Google, translate me. You know, how are you to in Hindi, right? The basically same way we have a command called translate. Example, uh, what I'll be doing is I'll create one demo file again. Demo. This is demo three dot txt, and I'll write here one second. Okay, and again give me a moment okay i'm creating a file called demo3.txt and i'm writing this is the seventh you know seven this is the seventh command okay seventh command some random text okay so what i'll be doing now let me clear the screen let me view whatever i did demo.3.txt okay so this is the seventh command now what i want to do i want to convert all these you know first two are capital letter other than that everything is small right i want to convert everything to capital letter what i do i make use of a translate command tr stands for translate command and within a code you give whatever data present in you know the file whatever the data present in the file you want to convert from A to Z, whatever lowercase letter are there, you want to convert that to a capital letter. Means smaller case, you want to convert into a capital letter. What you want to convert? Cat dot demo three txt file. From the demo dot txt file, with the help of cat command, display me the content. And I will be using here pipe symbol uh, as I previously told. This output and I don't want to display in the screen. I want to send as an input to tr command. Okay, in TR, what tr command will do? Whatever the small case letter, it will convert to capital case letter. Let me see. Okay, you can observe here, right? See, th was capital, so that is left as it is. Then after that, is is the seventh command. Everything is being capitalized with the help of this command. Okay, now if I want to, you know, convert from the capital letters to small letters, just interchange this. Okay, small to capital. Now what this will do? Check this. The first two letters. This is the original text. The first two, you know, letter th has been, you know, converted into smaller case. The other rest is remained as it is. Okay, so this is 
you know very useful whenever you are doing something like you know you have white spaces and you want to replace all the white spaces with a tab or you want to replace some delimiter with something you want to search something and replace with something to the whole document this translate command will help you to do this okay then the final command is shutdown command to turn off your systems okay how can i turn off my system with the help of command okay first there is a command known as shutdown okay there is command known as shutdown oh, shutdown okay if i want to shut down after 3 minutes okay what i have to do shut down my system after 3 minute plus 3 what it is telling shut down schedule for saturday so and so time after 3 minutes so i don't want to do the after this 3 minute what i can do can shut down shut down hyphen c or i can just do control c that control c or sorry you can just do shut down shut down hyphen c hyphen c means cancels whatever the schedule it was scheduled to you know shut off uh, shut down my system it will cancel it okay there are you know plenty of option with the with shut down command let us see okay the main command is shut down with the help of shut down what you can do you can restart reboot your system means you have to turn off and again turn on your system you can alt your system and you can cancel whatever the operation you have been scheduled okay you can do various operation related to powering of your system so that's all for you know today's video i know this this video i thought of making it bit small but i guess it's been around 20 to 25 minutes it's lengthy video i just wanted to make concepts clear rather than seeing the length of the video if you have any doubt let me know in the comment section i will be happy to help you out and you know solve your queries thanks for watching please do like share and subscribe to my youtube channel see you in the next video until then keep learning keep growing